Well, Lillian Bland was born in 1878. She was actually born in England, but the Bland family, or her branch of the Bland family, had been settled in Ireland for 250 years. But in about 1900, their mother Charlotte took ill and John Humphrey brought the family back to Ireland. They, John Humphrey and Lillian lived with John's sister Sarah. Lillian was actually inspired by being sent a postcard by her uncle Robert. And this postcard featured Louis Blériot and his aircraft flying across the English Channel in 1909. And of course Blériot was the first man to fly the Channel. Not long afterwards, still in 1909, she visited the Blackpool Air Meeting. She took a notebook with her and she made copious and detailed drawings and notes and comments. And when she came back, she decided that she would construct her own aircraft. And she first of all made a scale model glider, assisted by Aunt Sarah's gardener's boy, who was actually a man of 32, Joe Blaine. But he was a great, of great help, and it could be regarded as Lillian's working partner in this. So she made the scale model, and then decided she'd make a full-size glider and worked away over the, the winter of 1909 constructing it. The glider having been constructed, she and Joe took it up to the top of Carn Money Hill and started flying it as a glider. And Lillian went gliding in her glider on top of Carn Money Hill. So the next stage was to fit an engine and she'd always had this idea in mind of fitting an engine to the glider. She asked A.V. Rolfs to build an engine for her, uh, which they did, and she went across on the ferry to pick it up. You know, it was quite heavy and in a big box. She brought it back on the train, and apparently one of the people in the train compartment, one of the ladies sitting beside her, said to him, What have you got in that box, dear? And she said, Oh, that's an aeroplane engine. And the lady said, Well, pray, what is an aeroplane? Because... In 1909, it was only six years since the Wright brothers had flown. So therefore, this was all new really, and quite a few people had really no idea what an aeroplane was or what it did, or how it was constructed. This again is the context of Lillian really being so much ahead of her time. She and Joe thought that really Carn Money Hill wasn't suitable. So the machine actually was capable of being broken down into three parts and was towed uh, to Lord O'Neill's estate up near Antrim. And in 1910, she took to the air for the first time. Now she christened the aircraft the Mayfly because it may fly or it may not. Round about August, well, definitely in August 1910, started up the motor, started to go forward and noticed, oh, this is rather smooth came down again and realised by looking behind her that the tracks that she was making in the grass had disappeared and about a hundred yards later reappeared again so she had actually flown uh, the first woman in the world to build, design and fly her own aeroplane. But her father was beginning to get a bit worried about Lillian doing these dangerous things and he offered to buy her a motor car. And then once more scandalised Aunt Sarah by deciding that she would set up a Ford dealership in the north, which really didn't go down at all well. So that would be a lady being in trade. And she then astonished the family by deciding to marry. Her cousin Charles had emigrated to Canada and was creating a farm out of, really out of virgin bush in British Columbia. And 1913, Lillian married him, went off to Canada. She and Charles had a daughter, Patricia, Pat. And there she was on another adventure, you know, turning this land of 200 felled trees into somewhere that would grow crops and vegetables and fruit. 
And because he had a bad back, she ended up fixing all the machinery. And she was only able to do that because of this whole backstory that she had with, with her plane and previously tink tinkering with cars and was able to do that. And then in 1929, at the age of 16, uh, Patricia dies of a tetanus infection. One of her letters home, her description, um, is about how she's, she's lost this wonderful child of nature. And I think it was that grief that ended the marriage and she came back home to England in 1935. She went to Cornwall eventually and she died in 1971 at the age of 92. And there is a famous quote in which she said, I proved wrong the many people who said that a woman could not build a plane and that gave me great satisfaction. The fact that historians are bringing her story back, I think Lillian would be absolutely delighted about that. What would also delight her is we're in a different era. Lillian would be so excited about that because she would be saying, if she had a, a, a young girl in front of her, you can do exactly what I did. You can be an engineer, you can be a pilot, you can be an astronaut, you can be whatever you want to be. And whether it's the Wright brothers or Lillian Bland or Harry Ferguson, you know, they clearly had though that inventor mindset where every time they came across a problem, they would find a solution to it. And that's why they were the successful inventors they were.